Today, we're taking a look at the Veneziani Conereide GMT, one of the first watches using the new Seiko GMT movement, the NH34. When Seiko launched the 5KX GMT, we knew it is only a matter of time before other brands start launching their models using the same movement. This is one such watch, and my, I must say right off the bat, it is spectacular. Sometimes watches look amazing on renders and then fail to deliver in person, as they lack substance, seem flat and uninspiring. While other times the renders don't do a watch justice. This is the case of the latter. On renders, I thought the watch was just okay. Nothing special, but a decent looking piece. Once I had the pleasure of spending some time with it, I started to fall in love. In person, this is so much better looking than on the renders, it is beyond belief. I originally wanted to go for the blue dialed version, as it had the color coding of the hands done correctly, and you know I'm a sucker for those. But then something clicked in me when I saw this black and gold model, and in the last second I requested this one. I have to admit I made the right call. The combination of black and rose gold makes it look way more expensive than it is, and despite all the hands having the same color, it somehow just works. The balance and proportions of the dial, bezel, case and hands make it wear perfectly for a 39mm watch. It doesn't appear too small, like the Revelo Hex Mariner I reviewed, nor larger than 39 like the Benclair. It sits in the middle appearance-wise and is just perfect. The only dimension that makes it slightly less elegant is the thickness. Due to the very thick bezel, it appears chunky, but even that I learned to like. It gives a more robust look, not to mention it makes the bezel operation easy and a joy. The bezel itself comes with a mineral crystal insert that has a bicolor background. The lower gold colored part is actually mirrored and it creates an amazing effect appearing black in some light and gold in another. I was honestly surprised at how good the effect looks and again it was something that the online pictures failed to present correctly. I do wish they went with a sapphire for the bezel but having mineral is not a deal breaker. I also love the fact they didn't loom the bezel numerals, even though I'm aware I'm probably in minority when it comes to that. The case comes with a mix of brushed and polished surfaces that are reversed to what I'm used to, with top surfaces being polished and sides brushed, even though I pre prefer it done the other way around, with this watch on this bracelet, this works better as the finish continues perfectly down to the H-Link bracelet that is one of the most comfortable I had the pleasure of wearing. The hidden butterfly clasp is both a good and a bad thing. The good one is the elegance in which it blends with the rest of the bracelet seamlessly, but the downside is lack of any micro adjustment or on the fly adjustment, meaning it is hard to find a perfect fit. Most of the time you will end up either slightly too loose or slightly too tight. If however you're lucky enough to have it fit perfectly, it will be amazing. The dial and hands are a work of art. Simple at first glance, but full of amazing details once you get up close. The fit and finish is very good and there is a minimum of foreign materials found, even under macro. The dial comes with a subtle sunburst effect that is perfectly contrasted with the rose gold polished markers and hands. I especially love the model name that is printed in a way to mimic a weave you would usually find on clothes. Yet another detail that seems simple from afar only to end up blowing up your mind up close. I have no idea how they did it, but it gives the appearance of a gold thread that has been sewn into the dial. My only complaint was the GMT hand that I wish was longer and with a bigger triangle at the end. But I guess that would have made it too similar to the Rolex GMT hand, so they ended up with this smaller one. I respect that decision and again is something I'm willing to let go just because of how beautiful the watch as a whole is. 
Like I said so many times on my channel, the specs, the brand, and the hype are all something that might or might not be an additional bonus, but not a reason to buy a watch. A watch should be bought on merit of its looks alone. Everything else can be a bonus. If you buy a watch just because of its specs or because everyone else is buying it, but you don't fall in love with the looks, you will eventually end up regretting your decision. With this, I have my pet peeves, the lack of sapphire on the bezel, the smallish GMT hand and the thick bezel that I ended up liking. All of those are easily outweighed with how much I like the look of it as a whole which is why I want this watch despite all the negatives I mentioned. This is now the third microbrand watch this year that simply blew my mind away and made me completely fall in love with it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and until the next video, bye. <music>